Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Viking 3 and 5 series dishwashers training. This is your moderator, Margaret McSweeney, and I'm so glad you're here today. Before we begin the presentation, I would like to review a few housekeeping items and make some introductions. First of all, uh, please remain on mute during the call. If you have questions, please utilize the chat function to ask questions during the training. All questions will be answered at the end of the training presentation. For your information, we will be recording this training session. And now for the introductions. Sue Bailey, Director of Go-To Market Strategy at Viking Range. Nicole Cooper is the Showroom Manager at Middleby Residential's Irvine Showroom. And Jamie Larita is the Executive Chef and Brand Ambassador for Middleby Residential Chicago Showroom. Thank you very much, Margaret. Hey guys, it's nice to see you this week for our amazing training sessions. I have to tell you, I make a pretty good chocolate chip cookie, but last night, if anybody was watching on the Viking Range Facebook Live, I had a friend of mine, uh, James Beard Award-winning award chef, Mindy Siegel, uh, cook and bake her, it's not even a chocolate chip cookie. It's like um, a chocolate, I don't even know what to call it, but you get layers of chocolate and they're really, really perfectly balanced between chocolate and salty. And here in my wall oven, I've got them baking and these cookies are spectacular. So as you can see, when you follow the recipe, you're actually gonna cut them into squares, but they will come out in a round shape. And as you can see, when they bake, all those layers of chocolate are just amazing. Today we're going to be talking about dishwashers. And I have to say, having both dishwashers from the 3 and the 5 Series collection live in our showroom, the 5 Series dishwasher is amazing. So I can't wait for you guys to learn about it and then train you on how you can make your customers really happy with this new dishwasher. So Sue, take it away. Thanks, Jamie. And I'm just always so jealous of all the good food that you have there in the Chicago showroom. Can't wait for us to be able to get back up there and be in there with you. you. Hey, guys, it's great to have you on the call today. A uh, special shout out to my friend Sazi. Um, Sazi, glad you're able to join us here along with everybody else that is here. Nicole is in the beautiful California showroom. She's going to be kind of my vanna today this one is it's not that it's not fun it's an exciting it's just it's different it's a dishwasher right but these as, as jamie said guys these are such a great dishwasher and you guys all know i can cook and choose not to but i am the queen when it comes to using the dishwasher i am it is just for me because i don't like to clean it is truly one of the most important pieces in the house and yeah i know that it's a free product with us um that the customer can get but it is one of the best dishwashers out there and i'm going to walk you guys through it as to why and and why and how it, it is so great first of all you guys will know we did introduce this dishwasher about a year ago um it is a completely redesigned chassis guys it, there is a significant increase in the rigidity of the unit it is a quieter operation than what we had before it is just wonderful um the thing i love most about, well, no, that's not true. One of the things I love most is the full stainless steel interior. Nicole's going to open that door for us. And guys, some people, I think those of us in the premium market kind of take this for granted a little bit, but a stainless interior dishwasher, hands down, is what our customer has got to have. Um, there are a lot of plastic tubs out there and, you know, nothing against it, but that, that stainless interior, it, it offers a premium appearance, guys. It will not stain. It does not ho hold odors like the plastic tub. And a very important part too, guys, is that with it being a stainless steel interior, this actually improves the drying ability during water evaporation over a plastic tub. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about dry in a minute. That's a great shot right there, Nicole. As you can kind of see how, how very commercial this looks when when we were working on designing this um dishwasher one of the things that was very important was that the baskets had that heavy duty feel um we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute but it's just a great look in there uh one of the the differences also is nicole i'm gonna get you pull the bottom rack out for me just real quick um in the past 
um, any of you guys that are, are a little older with me will remember the uh, cow rod heating element that was always used in the um, bottom of the dishwasher, used to help heat the water, used to help from the dry from that standpoint. We don't do that now. Um, today, we use the flow through inline water heater. And guys, just so much better than before because it actually provides a more accurate water temperature. It's fast and it is way more energy efficient than the cow rod used to be. And I know I'm not the only one who lost a wooden spoon to a cow rod um, heating element in the bottom of the dishwasher years back. Another great feature about this is the turbidity sensor. Okay, guys, this sensor determines how cloudy or how dirty that wash water is, and it can add wash times or water depending on your soil level. Okay, so what this sensor does is it ensures a clean result so there's no need to pre-rinse. Okay, if I, if I was in front of you guys, I would ask you guys, all right, raise your hand, how many of you actually pre-rinse your dishes? And then I'm gonna shame you for pre-rinsing your dishes. Because a lot of what we do is we talk about how much water does a dishwasher use, and then some of you are pre-rinsing your dishes using 10 to 40 gallons worth of water as you pre-rinse them. Not necessary in the Viking dishwasher to pre-rinse it, and a lot of that is because of that turbidity sensor that we have. The dishwasher also uses a flow meter water fill, okay? Before, and some other dishwashers will use a timed water fill, all right? This eliminates the use of under or over filling due to a water pressure variation because somebody's in another room taking a shower or running the, uh, the washing machine or whatever the case might be. Um, so we have that. Then one thing that you guys is so great about this that we all take for granted, there is a built-in high loop air gap. Okay, you can't see it back in the dishwasher, but this eliminates one of those very common installation errors when the installer forgets to put in a high loop. So this one is already built in and you don't have to think about it at all. All right, so those are kind of the not as great fun things to talk about. Nicole's done a good job of kind of, you know, giving us a good view of the inside. But here's one thing that is very important to a customer. What is that one question customer's gonna ask you when they start talking about dishwasher and that is, what's the decibel rating? Everybody wants to know what the decibel rating is on the dishwasher, and it is important because now you guys think about your home, I think about mine, my dishwasher is in the middle of my house, right? And now, with all of us working at home, it is important that our dishwasher is quiet because I wanna run my dishwasher when it's full, and that might be at 11 a.m. in the morning or it might be at 3 p.m. So I wanna make sure that it's very quiet. Guys, these dishwashers are extremely quiet. There are, you can't see it because this one's installed, but there's three layers of insulation, guys. The, the vitamin, the cotton, the full side walls, all of this. Now it's not just the insulation, guys. We also use brushless DC discharge and circulation motors. So the insulation along with this brushless DC, very quiet motors, means that the 524 dishwasher has a 42 decibel rating. The, the 324 has a 45 decibel rating, guys. This is quite, I can remember probably, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago, we were so excited that, you know, the dishwasher was a 50 decibel rating. And guys, that's quiet, all right? This 42 and 45 decibel create two of the quietest dishwashers that are actually on the market. So that is such a great, great, um, feature to have. All right, so let's move into washing. <laughs> yes, the craziest thing is the customer is more concerned about how quiet is the dishwasher than how well does it wash. Yeah, this one washes well. You guys that know me know I have always been someone who, because I don't like to clean, I don't want to rinse, pre-rinse my dishes. I want to put the dishes in just like they are after I've scraped everything off, and you can do that in this dishwasher. All right, guys, we have variable pressure wash. All right, what that means is we're gonna adjust the water volume, the pressure, and the temperature to give you the best wash available. We're gonna talk about cycles in just a minute. That's a great shot right there, Nicole, the stainless steel bottom spray arm. When we were discussing and, and talking through features of this dishwasher, it was very important to me that we had a stainless steel wash arm because especially the bottom, because you guys think about it, all those really, really dirty dishes do go in the bottom of your dishwasher, all right, that bottom rack. So we have multi-level washing. You've got that stainless steel spray arm in the bottom. You've got an upper spray arm that is right below the top rack. 
And then there's a top nozzle for that third rack that we have up there. So lots of great wash level. So no matter what you put in there, it is getting clean. Now we're gonna look at that bottom rack again, Nicole, and talk about that intense wash um, feature that you have on yours there. Yep, there we go. Thank you very much for that. So you get an intensive lower rack washing with that with this extra arm here. All right, guys, and this is really important. What it does is it basically works 180 degrees right there on that right side of that dishwasher. So any pan you have, I cooked rice yesterday, you guys, um, did leave it a little bit too long, had just a bit of stuck on rice. I put that pan in there like it was, and guys, it came out spotless. I mean, all of those little grains were gone out of there. And so anything on that right side is where if you select that intense wash, you're going to be able to get that additional wash right there. The, the best place to put the most dirty dishes is in that front right. That's where you're going to get the most of the intent wash, um, intense wash there. While we're talking about that, it is important to talk about the filtration system. With that rice that I cooked yesterday, so what I've got is I got a lot of grains of rice that are stuck, right? So Nicole's going to pull out of there for us our triple filtration system, okay? So there's actually three things. She's going to pull out that middle part. So there is a middle piece that comes out as she's, yep, there we go. So anything big, guys, you have an olive, you have, you know, something that's just a pit, you know, that gets stuck in there. You're going to be able to pull that out very easily, throw it in the trash, you're good to go. Then the next two actually are the fine filters. So they're going to actually catch anything else. Guys, it is filtration that makes the difference because that is what you want to make sure gets out. So as you're putting water back into it, that you're not using dirty water. So the filtration is extremely important. All you have to do is untwist this. You rinse all that off under your, um, your faucet and you stick it back in, you tighten it down and you're good to go. Very, very easy. There's a definite click to it. So it's not like you're not going to get it back in there. Right. Um, it's very, very easy to take care of and clean. Um, I do find guys, I don't have to clean this real often, but yesterday after I had all of this rice in there, I did take it out this morning, rinse it off, put it back in. We're good to go. Thank you, Nicole. All right. So we're going to switch to PowerPoint slide real quick. Um, because we're going to talk about drying for a minute. Thank you, Jessica, for switching that for me. Guys, drying is one of those things that customers get kind of frustrated about sometimes in a dishwasher. And here's what we really have to understand. We've got to understand that all of these energy um, standards that have been put to us for the government because of water, because of energy, all these things that are very necessary have really hit the dishwasher um, hard because it, it takes water, it takes pressure, it takes energy to really clean dishes. Drying takes a lot of energy, you guys. And so, and, and it's hard to get a good dry. We basically have two different dry systems, okay? So the 324 utilizes what a lot of your European uh, dishwashers utilize, which is static drying. Sometimes we call it condensate drying. Basically, there is no vent opening to the tub. Okay, the, dish, the dishes are dried based on that remaining hot air from the wash process, which then moves statically through the dishwasher. Now, remember that this drying performance is reliant on hotter wash temperatures, which we do have, stainless steel interior, which we have, superior insulation. Okay, so all these things that we've used in the development of this dishwasher are very important when it comes to a condensate dry, all right? One of the other mistakes that some people make is some people, the, um, the, the cycle ends and they want to take the dishes out right away. Okay. You've got to give that, that those dishes time to actually dry. So great thing to do is if you happen to be standing there and the dishwasher is done, pop that door open. Okay. Let the steam escape. Let all of that um, heat kind of evaporate, if you will. And, and those dishes come out very nicely. Now, if you have a customer who says, I want my dishes to be dry, I'm one of those people that wants her dishes to be dry, then you need to make sure they get the 524 dishwasher, okay? Because the 524 dishwasher has the turbofan drying, all right? It's got an active dry on that one. 
And what basically happens here is the fan circulates the air. So we've got a very efficient dry. You can see Jessica did a great job of showing us the fan in there. There is a vent opening in the tub with an exhaust. So what happens is you can, you can read it along with me. The fan activates during drying. It's drawing, pulling warm, humid air out of the tub, down through that chamber. You can see how that's coming down through there. Um, dry air from the outside of the unit mixes together, reduces the heat and humidity, and then what you get is cooled air. So guys, we're gonna go through some of the features, but I will tell you, my 524 dishwasher dries my dishes, okay? There are a couple of other things you have to remember when we talk about drying. It is very important that you have rinse aid in the dishwasher, okay? It is not going to dry well without rinse aid in the dishwasher, okay? If you're in a very hard water area, you're probably gonna wanna look at doing a water softening model, okay, that will help with the hard water and take care of that. Um, the other thing to make sure of is that you load your dishes correctly, okay? Um, that you don't have you know, things turned upside down where water can collect and those sort of things. We wanna make sure that we do that. Um, also, you gotta make sure you select the right program. Um, since the rinse temperature on some of the programs is very low with a shorter duration, those cycles will not give you as good of a dry as say the pots and pans we're gonna talk about, okay? So it has to do with not just the way the um, dishwasher performs, but also that you've got the rinse aid in there, that you've loaded it properly, and that you've selected the correct option from that standpoint. Good, thank you. All right, we'll go back to Nicole now, Jessica. How is it I'm almost always out of time when I'm not even halfway done? Okay, so Nicole's ready. Uh, one of the things that I really, really loved about this piece when we went here is I think that this is a very easy to use control panel, okay? Nicole's gonna turn it on for us real quick. And I love the fact there that, and we got a little light shining on it, but it's so pretty. You've got the blue lights coming through there um, that they will show the, um, how much time is left. What we're gonna do guys is we're gonna walk through the cycles. I'm gonna tell you what each of them do. Um, and then we're gonna talk about a few of the other things that we have. All this can be found in the use and care manual. So if you're not following or just wanna go back and check something out, you can find it all in the use and care manual. But basically in the 524 model, that both the 524 and the 324 are Energy Star qualified. Let me go ahead and say that up front. We're gonna focus more on the 524 because it has just about all the um, cycles that anybody could ever need. So we're gonna start with the very first cycle, which is auto. So Nicole's gonna push our auto button there. All right, so what you're gonna see is gonna happen is this is how much time that that cycle is going to run, okay? With just the regular. So that one is a two hour and 59 minute cycle, okay? Now, what happens during auto is it determines the amount of water and temperature needed for you, okay? You're not having to do anything from that standpoint. Auto is just that, it does it on its own, all right? The second um, cycle is combi clean. All right, so Nicole's gonna push combi clean for us. Notice that's a three hour and 27 minute cycle, okay? Combi clean is, is this. It will wash the delicate items in the upper basket and heavily soiled items in the lower basket. So what that means is that upper wash arm is a lower pressure while the bottom wash arm is using a higher pressure. Remember, we can do this because we have the variable pressure um, wash system that, there. Pots and pans. Here's what you guys will have to learn about pots and pans. Pots and pans is what I use every single time with a few exceptions, okay? This is for extra, extra heavy soil level. It's um, two hours and 26 minutes. Um, now these, I'm gonna show you guys in a minute how these times can change um, from that standpoint. I have yet to find anything that pots and pans will not clean. Um, so it is my favorite cycle. Regular wash is just that. This is for normal soil level. It's just the regular wash, okay? It's, it's the one that get tested uh, by any of the um, agencies that have to do any testing. Glass care, glass care, nice. Two, um, two hours and six minutes. This one actually, guys, has the lowest wash temperature. Um, it's similar, the 324 doesn't have glass care, they have a china crystal. So kind of think of glass care along that line. So it's a lower wash temperature, it's a lower rinse temperature. So it's just more careful um, for lack of a better word. Hour wash, 
Who wants to guess how long hour wash is? Let's see. There we go. An hour and 20 minutes here. Um, and there's, there's a reason it's usually 58 minutes. Um, I'll explain a little bit in a few minutes why it's a little bit longer. Let's go to quick wash now, Nicole. Quick wash. All right. Quick. Oh, you know what, Nicole? We've got you on tablet, and I think that's changing my time just a little bit. So quick wash is normally 35 minutes, but yep. But see, Nicole's, we've selected this one as having tablets. So for that reason, we've got them lasting a little bit longer because of what it has. There you go. Nice tablet there. All right. We're going to change that from tablet in just a minute. All right. Then rinse and hold should be about 15 minutes. Normally about, there we go. Because that one's not having to do anything different because there is no tablet there. So you've got all of these great functions. Now, guys, in the use and care manual, there is a program table that shows you how long each of these things are for a normal time. Now, here's what we're gonna talk about. So Nicole and I are gonna talk about the functions that you can do with the, the cycles, all right? So Nicole, we're gonna set it on pots and pans just because that is my favorite, favorite cycle. So once we're set on pots and pans, there we go. All right, two hours and 26 minutes. Now notice this. So the functions are to the right of the cycles. So you've got intense wash, you have high gloss, um, express, sanitize. So we've got those three. All right, so the first one I think is intense wash. Is that correct, Nicole? We're gonna push intense wash. Thank you for the thumbs. Intense wash. Notice that what we've done now is we have taken the cycle time up because now what I am doing with intense wash is I'm using that wash propel impeller that we showed you guys a minute ago, and it's washing those heavily soiled dishes that are on that lower part. Guys, this provides five times better washing than without the intense wash. But notice it is gonna take you a little bit longer to run the cycle. Then we'll turn off intense wash and we'll hit the express function and then do the express function. Okay, notice it lowered the time a little bit. If we weren't sitting on tablet, it would lower it even more than that um, because it's just going a little bit faster. This shortens the time of the wash cycle it decreases the water consumption by enabling washing at a higher uh, pressure. So that's what that one does. Now we're gonna turn that one off and turn on high gloss. My favorite, guys, oh, push high gloss. It didn't go, I don't think. Oh, it won't let you do that, okay. Yeah, um, it won't work. That's funny, because I do high gloss all the time. Is it because of the tablet, on. you think? It is because of the tablet, because it worked earlier, didn't it? I bet it's because it of did. the tablet. Okay, but anyways, high gloss, guys, Actually, it's a superior drying performance. I tell you, if I put it on high gloss, it is going to be very dry, okay? Actually just adding some additional heat in there, higher temperature from that. And then we have the last one, which is sanitize, okay? Let's see if you can push sanitize. Nope, not letting you do it, it's because of that. Mm -hmm. um, sanitize raises the water temperature and the final rinse to meet the NSF standards of basically at least 167 degree water, all right? So that is what that does. What we're going to do real quick, guys, is we're going to show you on the menu, because I'm almost out of time, how to change some of this. So there's the menu. All right, so what this one shows you guys is this is light off or light on. If she pushes select, oh, sorry. Yep, there. So L1 means the light's on. L0 means the light's off. Now push your time plus for me. Yep, the interior light. Thank you. There you go. All right, P3. Guys, this is how you change the amount of rinse aid that there is, okay? So for example, um, that means there's three doses of rinse aid, that's four doses, that's none, that's one, that's two. So that's just the doses of rinse aid that it's coming out each and every time. All right, if you push that again, the time delay plus, there we go. All right, this is the sound. So listen as she pushes the select button. So if she pushes select, zero is none, and then one, and then two. Hear how it was louder? So one is kind of a middle sound, two is a louder sound, and then zero means no sound. And then push that time delay plus one more. And this is for your water hardness, guys. You go to your use and care and read through it, but you're gonna wanna set it if you have a salt, uh, water softener model to how hard your water is. So, and there it, it is in the use and care of how to do that. Thank you. And now push that time plus one more time. This is where the tablet is. Okay, so that shows tablet. She has it set to one. If she says select zero, means there's no tablet, okay? So good, so now there's no tablet. Now hit the menu button again. 
Good. And now you'll notice that that's kind of changed. To the right um, of your numbers, thank you very much. See, now you can do high gloss. So now I've learned you cannot use high gloss with a tablet. Isn't that fun? There. To the right of those numbers, the 202 that we see are two little icons. One of them is telling her that the salt needs to be filled. She doesn't have enough salt. And the other one is telling her the rinse aid needs to be filled. She left those empty so that we were able to show you guys those couple of things that are right there. Um, real quick, because I think I have like two minutes left. If you'll open that door all the way for me, Nicole, that'll be great. Let's talk about the um, racks for just a minute. Um, so the racks, guys, heavy duty racks. The 524 has three racks the bottom, the upper, and the cutlery rack. This one, you guys, I use that kind of like Nicole has it. That's mostly for me. I am not spending the time to lay my, my cutlery out, but you can very nicely up there. Um, I use that for mostly ladle, um, spatulas and measuring spoons and all of that stuff. Full extension, you can take it out if you want to. I'm not gonna have Nicole take it out. So you can do whatever you need to there. Great, push that one back in. The top rack, guys, is a three position adjustable rack, okay? With or without dishes, you can load it up and down. So if you've got large things, there you go, Nicole, thank you. Adjustable, very easy, three positions. And then you also have some uh, fold down tines, you have some wine cradles, a lot of great flexibility here. You can double stack if you've got small um, cups and things, you can double stack on top of that, all the folding down tines just makes it very flexible from that standpoint. And then if we go to the bottom rack, the bottom rack also has, thank you, a lot of flexible tines, you've got a lot of things. That cutlery um, basket, which is where I put all my silverware, slides back and forth, you can put it wherever you want to. If I've got a lot of really um, dirty things or I'm just real picky about my, um, my silverware, I put it over here on the right side so I can get it in that intense wash um, so that I can make sure that I'm really getting the silverware cleaned really, really well. Well, um, the 524 does have the interior light. Both the models, guys, have the cycle indicator run light on the floor so that you will know the dishwasher is running because it's so quiet. Um, you cannot even tell that. And Jamie, I have left you like 30 seconds to talk about design. So Nicole, okay. thank you for that. Jamie, I'm throwing it to you. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. I thought you'd rather look at the cookies than me, but as far as the design <laughs> options go, guys, look at those great cookies. The VDW U3 T24 uh, and the VDW U524 come with installed stainless steel panels uh, with a handle. But if a customer wants a painted uh, version, like if they want to use the Delta Hughes, the Virtuoso, or the Tuscany, or their own custom panel unit, you have to order the FDW U324 or the FDW U524. As far as the handles, you got the Pro and the Virtuoso handles, which are available to install on your customer's custom panel. Enjoy the cookies and thanks for coming today. Thanks, all right. I do see one question from Ren, who's asking what the narrow bar on the back that can lay flat or up against the shelf. Um, I'm walking, you guys will be happy to know I'm walking down to my dishwasher right now to make sure I know what Ren is talking about. So I'm opening up my dishwasher. Oh yeah, so that if I, if I lay it flat, I'm able to ease, more easily put um, pans and things there. If I raise it up, it keeps my plates from pushing towards the back. Does that make sense, what I just said? Um, good, all right. Margaret, why don't you close us out? Thank you so much, Sue. And thank you everyone for attending today. Please make sure to catch Chef Jamie and Chef Jackie on Viking's Facebook live feed for some amazing cooking videos. Please also make sure to tune in for our next Viking virtual training. That will be Thursday, September 24th at 3 p.m. Central Time. Also look for a follow-up email with assets from today's training as well as Chef Mindy's amazing chocolate chip cookie recipe. A reminder, we are hosting virtual showroom appointments out of our Chicago and Irvine showrooms. Please visit our websites or talk to your Middleby Residential District Sales Manager for more information. This concludes our training today. We'll remain on the call to answer any other questions that you may have asked in the chat. 
And also, the cookies are delicious. We'll remain on the call if you guys want to see me eat one. Stop, it's so unfair that you get the cookies. It's still unfair. I'm just saying. Come on, that. Sue. Somebody's got to get them. <laughs> exactly. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye, everyone. <laughs>